Okay, from Colorado, Coach Tad Boyle and Wesley Gordon. Coach, go ahead with the opening statement and we'll go to questions. Absolutely. Um, well, another year uh, coming off a uh, fantastic year for our conference and certainly for our basketball program. And we're eagerly in anticipating another uh, great uh, season of Pac-12 basketball. And uh, when I think about Colorado's team this year, um, obviously Wesley's one of uh, four fifth-year seniors. We've got a lot of experience. George King is a fourth-year junior. Uh, Dom Collier and, and Tori Miller are juniors themselves. So a lot of experience coming back, and uh, we're uh, really excited about uh, the upcoming year. Okay, we'll open up the floor to questions. One on the right in the middle. Kevin Dana with pack-12.com. Coach, I was wondering if you could kind of tell us what it was like watching Team Colorado in the basketball tournament this past summer and kind of how that might open an avenue to future buffs who might not be at the NBA level but could certainly play overseas as maybe a, another source of a basketball outlet. It was great. Uh, great experience for not only those uh, young men but for our players. Um, that team came back to Boulder to have uh, kind of a mini camp to get uh, get ready for that tournament. So I got a chance to uh, work out in our practice facility and play some pickup with uh, these guys that were in town uh, taking summer classes. So uh, it was a great way to kind of tie the old uh, buffs with the current buffs. And these guys got a chance to uh, visit with them, again, play against them for a couple days. And then, you know, for them to go on the run, I remember I had that team over to my house for a barbecue, and I said, hey, if you guys get to the finals, I'll, I'll be there. And lo and behold, they, uh, they got to the finals, and I got on a plane to go to New York. Uh, but they lot of, brought a lot of pride, you know, uh, to our program, our current players, and uh, they came up a little bit short, which was I, – I always said I've been in a lot of really, really tough locker rooms after losses. That might have been the hardest one, and, and uh, those kids were devastated, but uh, really uh, – Brought a lot of pride to our program. On the right, about halfway back. Uh, Pat Rooney, Boulder Daily Camera. Coach, uh, when you're out on the recruiting trail, um, the body of work you've put together at this point, four NCAA tournaments in, in five years, you know, you have a good freshman class this year, a couple late signees. Do you think that body of work is starting to, to gain attraction to kids, uh, get Colorado more on their radar than, you know, say when you took over in Boulder? Yeah, I'd like to think so. I mean, you know, with recruiting, you just want to eat a little bit higher on the food chain than maybe you currently are. And I think the, the longer you're at a place, I think the stability of our program, the stability of our coaching staff, and we lost Coach Billups uh, this year uh, to go to the University of Denver, but, you know, Coach Prelo, Coach Roan, who've been recruiting for us now for going into year seven, uh, added a really quality coach in Bill Greer. Um, because so much recruiting – uh, the assistants do a lot of the legwork, and uh, we're very blessed with stability in that area. And then I think our current players, um, they, they are the difference makers when we bring these kids to campus. So I do think our success, our stability, and our current players uh, can speak to what can happen at Colorado. And obviously, we're looking to take it to the next step and the next level in recruiting and certainly on the court. Any other questions, Pat, with a follow-up? Uh, this is for Wes. Um, kind of a two-part question on uh, XJ being back this year. Uh, one, just what does it mean for the team, kind of you know, getting such an experienced guy back in the mix? And then for you personally, you know, you're a fifth-year guy um, in XJ. You know, Coach mentioned the fifth-year guys. He's the only one that's been there five years with you. Uh, what does it mean for you kind of personally to, to have him back in the mix to share a senior year with? Uh, it means a lot, you know, that I'm just not by myself in all of this. So he's been with me since day one. So it's just really nice to have him right next to me as I'm going through all this, as leadership role and all that, all, all those things. <clears throat> okay, we'll go to Aaron. Oh. <clears throat> Bruce. Yeah, uh, coach. I just wondering your thoughts on uh, you guys being picked uh, fifth with a lot of guys back, and just kind of what you see at the top of the the race this year. Well. I <clears throat> I didn't know we were picked fifth and really don't care where we're picked. I think that is the most uh, inconsequential uh, piece of information you can get on days like this because really it's all about, you know, where we go from here. Now, the league race, the league's really uh, good this year, like just like it was last year. And so 
Um, I think there's so many teams you can point to really any team in the conference and look at them being um, maybe as good, if not better, than they were last year. Obviously, we lost some good players. We lost a heck of a player in Josh Scott, but we're adding some good players. And I think the same can be said for any uh, anybody uh, in the league this year. But uh, uh, a lot of balance. Again, if we can get seven teams in again this year, I think everybody would be pretty excited about that. And uh, I think the biggest key for us as a league is we all have to take care of business and have great Novembers and Decembers uh, given our schedules. And we all have different schedules, uh, go to different schools, uh, play in different uh, tournaments. We have to uh, play well and win games in November and December. It'll help everybody come January and February, and certainly March. We'll go to Ben in the third row. Hey, Coach, uh, Ben Parker from GoldenBearPark.com. Both uh, Colorado and Utah joined the Pac-12 in 2011. Can you talk about the sort of the budding rivalry that the two of you have sort of formed as, as schools and also just the value that you feel both of you have brought to the, to the conference? Well, I think two really good institutions that uh, fit in well, you know, with the other 10 uh, Pac, it used to be the Pac-10, now the Pac-12. So I think we've brought something to the table, hopefully, um, as a basketball program. I know when we came in the league, you know, our program was a little bit further along than Utah's was. Uh, Larry had just kind of taken over and was uh, faced with a, a pretty major rebuilding job. Obviously, he's done a terrific job uh, doing that. We've been able to sustain our program at a pretty high level and compete uh, you know, with most of the teams in the Pac-12. So I think it's been a good addition for the league. I think we feel very, very good about it and fortunate, and I think uh, the rest of the league feels the same way. But uh, a good fit for both institutions. Okay, we'll go back to Pat. Coach, uh, one player no one was really talking about at this point last year was George King. Obviously, he went on to have a, a great year, league's most improved player. What can we expect out of him uh, for an encore this year, especially when he's going to you know, get the attention of opposing defenses? Well, you know, <clears throat> George really works on his game in the off season. I mean, he spends a lot of time in the gym. Obviously, that was uh, evident by his breakout year last year. He used his redshirt year certainly to the to the fullest. He's uh, always uh, getting shots in after practice. He's a very, very good knockdown shooter, and he proved that by uh, leading the league in three-point shooting last year. But he's also a big, strong, physical guy who can post up, can get to the rim, finish with contact. Um, the big, the big challenge with George is, you know, good players make themselves be better, and he's made himself better. He's a good player. Great players, you know, make those around them better, and that's that's the transition he has to make. Um, is make how does he make Wesley Gordon better? How does he make Dom Collier better? Xavier Johnson better? And and he's got the ability to do that. Now this year, he's going to work on those things. Okay, we have time for one more, and we'll go right here in front. Hey guys, since you've come into the Pac-12, there's at least in Los Angeles, we're all asking, you know, who's Colorado's rival? You know, because ASU has Arizona, USC has UCLA. Do you, have you in basketball? Have you guys feel like you have a rival at all in the in the Pac-12? You can start with that, Wes. Uh, I mean, myself personally, I don't feel like we have a rival with anybody. I think we try and go out and beat every team we play. So I don't think there's any. I mean, maybe Utah, I guess. You know, I think, you know, obviously everybody tries to pit us against Utah. We're travel partners. But I think rivalries have to take on a life of their own. You can't just pick somebody. And, and uh, you know, I remember when Bill McCartney was a football coach at Colorado. He, now, he, he came in, he picked Nebraska. And Nebraska never re recognized that rivalry until Colorado started beating them. And so... Um, you know, I think for us, we've got to just get to the upper echelon of the league. Those rivalries will, will happen, I think, over the course of time, whether it's, you know, they're, usually they're sparked by an incident. And uh, I'm not going to, you know, wake any sleeping dogs in this conference. We're just going to try to sneak up on people. But uh, that stuff will, will, will come as time, as time goes on.